Good evening, everyone. My name is Denise Lente, and I am one of the fourth grade teachers. And Grace, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Grace E. I am a special education teacher that works with third grade. Nancy. Thought I saw Nancy come in. We'll circle back to her. Uh, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Millman, and I am one of the two third grade um, in-person teachers this year. It's my fourth year at Daniel's Run. And Paul, I think I saw Paul as well, right? Yep. Hi, my name is Paul Yu. I am the other th in-person third grade teacher, and this is also my fourth year here at Daniel's Run. All right, Maggie. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Maggie Carmichael. I am a special education teacher supporting fourth grade this year, and this is my third year at Daniel's Run. And I saw Kim Horn sign in, and I'm a, uh, Aaron and Colleen, is that who we have also? All right, the three of you want to do introductions there? <laughs> Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Kim Horn, and I teach fourth grade, and I am one of the in-person teachers, and I've been here 10 plus years. And I'm Erin Denton, and I am also one of the in-person fourth grade teachers, and um, also a parent here. My daughter, Avery, is in first grade, and my son, Cole, is in kindergarten and are also um, coming to school in person this spring. I am Colleen Barron. I am the other fourth grade in-person teacher, and this is my first year at Daniel's Run. Just uh, so we have an idea, uh, are, are you guys using the computer or the camera right now? Right now, we're just using the computer camera. Okay. Not, not the 360. Yeah, that's okay. But the sound is still very good. You sound good. So, oh, good. Um, and then Lori, go ahead. Hi, I'm Lori Huberman Hayes, and I run the science lab and do environmental ed and things like that. And I'm a resource teacher, and I've been at Daniel's Run for 21 years. And a couple more. Brittany, I saw. Hi, I'm Brittany Weber. Um, I am the other virtual fourth grade teacher, and I have been at Daniel's Run for 12 years. And did I miss anybody? I know Michael and Nancy, if you're back on, you can go. You know. I, I accidentally clicked the off button. I apologize. I'm Nancy Slocum. I'm the other special ed teacher in fourth grade. And Michael, are you back with us? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Michael Parker, I'm one of the assistant principals, and I support grades three, four, and five. All right. Did I miss any staff? If I did, I apologize. And you can introduce yourself. Hi, this is Zoya Lucas, ESOL teacher. I work with third grade and fourth grade, and this is my eighth year at Daniel's Run. I have a fifth grader, and I have a student who graduated from Daniel's Run. Thank you, Zoya. Sorry, I didn't have my list. All right, so we will get going. This is gonna be probably, uh, last night it was 20, about 22 minutes of me talking at you. Uh, so we're gonna, go through these slides i'm going to turn on our chat so that you can as we're going put questions in the chat if you would like um that way you don't forget uh mr parker is going to monitor that he might be able to respond uh right away if not we'll certainly answer those questions at the end and we'll also give you the opportunity to ask questions verbally at the end as well uh so we will get started here um so reminder that we have the teacher prep days coming up on thursday and friday and this is just for our third through sixth grade students so if you have any younger siblings um you know they do have regular days of school our fifth grade um uh, and our fifth grade in-person teachers have commitments tonight on their own educational uh journey that they're on so they're unable to join us um and then friday again teacher prep day fifth grade is going to have a class meeting on uh, friday morning 
And Monday, third, fourth, and fifth grades are having class meetings uh, like we normally do on a Monday. Then it will be with, if, a, if your child has switched to a new teacher, they would join in that new teacher's class meeting. So we'll, we'll work out all the, uh, the kinks on the virtual side of things on Monday. And then Tuesday is when our Tuesday, Wednesday students return in person. And then on Thursday will be Thursday and Friday students will return on the 18th. And I will say at the beginning, remember this is based on your preference that you have submitted at some point between July and, uh, and today. Um, so not one of the questions that's come up is there seems to be some confusion that everyone has to come back to school. That's not the case. So it's based on your preference uh, that you have selected. Um, we're going to go through some health measures. Again, this presentation is pretty heavy for the in-person return. We did invite all parents. We didn't want anybody left out. But you know, if, you know, for the uh, folks who are staying 100% virtual, even if you're transitioning to a new teacher, uh, for the most part, you know, we should hit the ground running in terms of virtual instruction, looking pretty similar to what you're currently experiencing. Um, oh, there is a health screening commitment form, uh, and by the way, this is a, a county-produced slideshow that I've tailored to fit our needs here at, at Daniel's Run. I'm not going to read every word to you. Uh, so the big thing is the health screening commitment form needs to be completed for each child. So if you have multiple children, uh, it does need to be completed for every child. Uh, the easiest way to find it is in parent view, I realize as elementary parents, we don't use parent view as much uh, until middle school when they start to get grades and stuff in in there. So if you're not familiar with parent view, reach out to our front, front office and we'll help you. Uh, you can always, um, uh, the link to the form was sent in the parent letters. You can scan it back to us and you can always send it with your child on the first day. Bottom line is uh, if, they, if they go to class that first day, we need that form completed and it's a one-time form i know some some school districts are doing like daily apps and things like that this is a one-time form saying that you understand what the covid symptoms are and you're not going to send them if they have covid symptoms all right next so social distancing uh you know the six foot separation whenever possible uh, you know, we've had now preschool, kindergarten. Today was our first day with first and second grade. Uh, we'll show you some pictures of a classroom. And, uh, and I don't know if Kim and or if you guys are able to maybe move your computer at the end to maybe show off your classroom. But within the classroom, you'll see the desks are separated. You know, certainly as we move through the halls, uh, you know, we're doing our best to keep them at six foot distance. And that sometimes is a challenge, especially the younger they are. Um, and then out at recess, again, we'll be monitoring them, encouraging them to, to keep that uh, distance and even further distance. Uh, but certainly within the classroom, uh, the way the desks are set up, that will be strictly followed. And uh, there will also be social distancing on the bus. We'll talk more about lunch, but we will be eating lunch in the classroom as well. Uh, cleaning protocols. So just so you know, you know our custodial staff has uh, undergone training to um, make sure that they're following the proper cleaning protocols. Uh, during the course of the day, they are cleaning high touch surface areas, railings, doorknobs, things like that. Uh, they have a clean a bathroom cleaning schedule. Uh, they're gonna go into the classrooms. When the classrooms are out, classes are out at recess, they will go in, give a cleaning of the, of the desks midday. So we've added that to our cleaning protocols here. Um, so we're staying on top of that. Uh, hand washing, this was actually about right, probably about a year ago, I was moving around to every class, reminding them how important it was to wash hands, and there was great science discussions talking about uh, COVID-19, little did we know it laid ahead of us. Uh, so that will continue to be a, a point of emphasis uh, to make sure that the students are um, washing hands regularly, especially after sneezing and things, uh, and we also have automatic sanitizer station set up and every classroom I think at this point has four gallons uh, I think they're gallon uh, jugs of uh, hand sanitizer with uh, three or four refills available at this point so we have plenty of that 
they will need to wear their face mask. They will need to wear that. We'll talk again more in depth at recess, but it is expected that they'll, they'll wear it at recess. Breaks are allowable. Uh, we you know, want to try to limit those as much as possible, but if they do need a break, uh, we will allow that. Uh, you know, we're going to certainly, at that point, really strictly enforce that six foot, if not more, social distancing if we can. Certainly, if the break occurs outside, that's even better, but they will need to have their masks. Um, face coverings, uh, so a couple things here. The, the one on the bottom left is, is one of the ones we've seen a little bit. Uh, so if it has that vent on it, uh, the health department is telling us that's not an allowable face covering. And then just make sure it's not like a bandana, a scarf, something like that. The gaiters are allowable uh, as long as they're more than one um, layer, which most of them are at this point. That's the change from a few months ago where originally there was guidance that they weren't allowed, but those gators are allowed now. Uh, we do have a couple care rooms set up. One is my office and the other one is our main conference room. So if a student does have COVID symptoms, um, we will move them to a care room instead of the clinic and we'll give you a call uh, for them to get picked up. And myself or Mr. Parker are the two people designated to monitor the care room. So it'll be one of us uh, sitting with your child uh, until they get picked up. Uh, on to arrival. So walkers and kiss and ride, uh, you know, next week we'll, we'll, we'll show the two true test of our plan here. It, it went again, knock on wood pretty well today, but adding four grade levels next week. So uh, we're going to ask that walkers and kiss and ride both use door number two. That's a little bit of a change. Um, kiss and ride usually goes through door three. Walkers kind of came into door one, but we're asking both to use door two this year. Mr. Parker will be out there with numbers for you next week. So the best thing is in the morning, even if you uh, plan to walk, but like you, you, you know, on a rainy day, you might pick up your child and kiss and ride. The best thing is that first day to get a number from Mr. Parker. So you have that. If you're going to use kiss and ride at any point, it's a lot easier for us to give you that number in the morning and then you have it as opposed to picking up in the afternoon and we haven't given you that number yet. So see Mr. Parker outside for your number. Again, uh, bus stu students on the bus will use door one. And, you know, our focus is, uh, is the safety and well-being of your, your children and our students. So you have a frame of reference. We'll have about 200 students daily here once third through sixth grade comes back. And we were at 760 students last year, right? So it's about a quarter or so right of the students in the building um, on a daily basis. Uh, dismissal. So walkers are going to use door number two. We're going to dismiss them at 325 and we're uh, cleaning up that procedure a little bit. But uh, bottom line at 325, the walkers should come out and, uh, and then we will start dismissing Kiss and Ride at 330 and they're going to use door two and our bus riders will use door one. And uh, so bus transportation, bottom line on this slide is we are in the process of calling all the parents uh, who have kids who are taking a bus uh, so that you know exactly uh, the days of the week and what your bus stop is. Um, you can also look in that parent view account. Uh, give us until the end of the week. If, if, it's, if, if it's next Monday and you haven't heard from us, go ahead and call the school, uh, but give us the rest of the week here to get those phone calls made. Uh, we've done this in the previous grade levels and, and so far, so good. Things have gone pretty smoothly in the buses. Uh, again, you can find that in the parent view and you can also call our main office and we'll, we'll help you with it as well. Uh, all right, next on to some instructional items. So, you know, concurrent instruction, we've talked about this, uh, you know, the past few months here. And so, uh, you know, the model that we're following in third through fifth grade is um, our students who have selected uh, to be in person uh, is either falls into group A or group B, right? Either they come Tuesday and Wednesday, they're online Thursday and Friday, or vice versa. So all of our in-person classes, uh, it's still concurrent instruction, uh, but we have separated out and made all virtual sections too. So what's kind of called that group C student, the student who's never going to be in person is with a all students who are going to be virtual four days a week 
uh, with a virtual teacher. Um, next here, so again, you see uh, the example here, right, of the teacher teaching at uh, from school and students at home accessing the material. And, you know, want to spend just a minute on this idea here, right? Like, this is another new way for a teacher to teach, uh, right? I would say it's our, you know, we, we knew how to do in-person instruction and then we have done a pretty good job of figuring out virtual and now we're gonna be combining the two here. So, um, you know, there's a process uh, and this is just one example, a basic example. Uh, you know, we certainly wanna include the students who are at home as much as possible. Uh, but it is going to be a process and when your student is at home so if you have a student who is uh coming to us on thursday and friday they're home on tuesday and wednesday um you know especially early on as routines are built uh you're going to see more independent work uh you know there's going to be you know for instance just coming back in from recess right like it takes a little time to come back in from recess and get up the stairs uh, you know these are older kids i don't think it'll take them 15 minutes to line up and get out to recess like kindergarten did but for kindergartners you know you gotta who have never been in school before uh you know that took a while right so you know there are some routines to build uh again we certainly want to keep the um students who are at home um engaged and, and in the class as we go from initiating down this continuum to sustaining you know teachers will be able to fold that in more and more um but uh you know it's going to take some time early on so uh, just be patient with us again as our teachers learn this new another new way here of uh teaching uh so some pictures this is from one of our kindergarten classes so again most of the rooms looking pretty similar in terms of you get an idea of what the spacing looks like and, and they'll have some something to keep their supplies in we'll talk about that in a few minutes here um, and then here's a picture, just kind of a reverse angle, looking at it sort of from the teacher's angle uh, back towards the back of the classroom there. So you get an idea of what the, the basing looks like in the class. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and turn this over. There were some grade specific slides. So Lisa and Paul, I'll let you talk about third grade. Thanks, Chris. Um, so this information was also sent home or sent over the interwebs to you in an email um, from Friday. I do have one correction that I realized I made a mistake today on, um, so I will share that with you. But we want the kids to bring to school some things every day, and then some things they are gonna bring to school and keep at school as their own personal supplies. So in the top, we want them to bring their laptop, charger, and headphones. It could be an extra pair of headphones or the ones that they also use at home. They're welcome to leave headphones here with their personal belongings if they want to. Um, a little different from some other grade levels, we want them to just bring them on the first day that they come. So if, if your child comes on Tuesday and Wednesday, we just want them to bring their laptop, charger, and headphones on Tuesday. It will charge here overnight, and they will bring them back home at the end of the day with them on Wednesday. Same thing for Thursday, Friday. They just bring it on Thursday. It'll charge here overnight. They'll bring it back home to you on Friday because they will not need it in between. Um, the time they go home and the time they come back, they're not going to need to use it. Um, then also mask, water bottle, and we had specifically handed out a blue writing journal for all of our third graders who were able to stop by and pick it up. If your child doesn't have one, we have lots more um, in my classroom here. We're happy to hand them out to them. Those are ones they're going to bring back and forth because um, they will use those on days that they are not in person with us as well. And then bring to school and keep at school, just a pencil box or pencil pouch. It's up to them. Colored pencils, crayons, or markers, or all three if you prefer. Um, just a pair of kid scissors and then whiteboard markers. Um, if anyone's in need of any of these supplies, just let me know. You'll notice it doesn't include glue sticks and regular pencils and stuff like that. We have plenty of those in the classroom that will be given to each child, so they will not need to bring their own for those. Thank you. And we also, we're going to provide a water bottle, so we actually can delete that from the list. We, were, we had lost a box of 100 of them, but they were found today, so we can, uh, students do not need to worry about bringing them. So. All right, thank you there, Lisa. And we'll move on to fourth grade. I'll turn it over to one of the fourth grade teachers. So our information is very similar. Some of the details are different. Um, so the things that your children are bringing to school every day, 
Um, unlike third grade, we're asking that students bring their laptops and chargers to and from school every day. So that's going to come with them, come home every day so that um, they are in the routine of bringing it every day with them. Um, water bottle, whether that's a water bottle that you would prefer from home or the one that's being provided by Daniel's Run, but their water bottle with their name on it. Um, a mask, I know for my own children, I put a couple of extra masks just like in the front pocket of their backpack, just in case. Today was day one for my daughter and she came back to me with a different mask than she began with. So it seemed like maybe that was a worthwhile idea after all. So if you want extra masks, just like somewhere that they can tuck it in their backpack that they just know that they're there just in case. Um, and then the last thing that we said as to school every day is a snack or two, maybe. Um, we know that if your children are like our families, they have been grazing for 12 months straight now, and they may be hungry at odd times of the day. So a snack or two, and then we'll kind of work out. <laughs> Ms. Millman says snacks for third grade too. Um, so we'll work out like when, when is the best time for that to happen um, and how we want that to happen. I think like a lot of things, there are going to be a lot of things that we try to plan for and then reality sets in and we might need to adjust. Um, if there's anything that I can say for our students and families and staff, it is that we are excellent at um, kind of changing directions and being flexible and we'll just continue to do that. Um, the things that they will keep at school and these were sent home to in an email and We'll probably, um, at the end of this week, send one more reminder just so that you have a sense of, of what to do because I know there's a lot of communication coming out. So we'll send one more reminder at the end of the week to make sure everybody's on the same page. But um, two, either pencil boxes or pencil pouches, um, crayons, markers, scissors. Um, it should say folder, not folders, but one folder just to corral loose papers. Um, two notebooks and dry erase markers, and um, students still need to have some things at home for their virtual days, like a, a whiteboard that they've been using, a whiteboard marker, um, kind of some of those same things, um, just so that when they are on their virtual days, they're still able to participate, um, just like they have been all along. Um, and that's really it, and we just want to also say, on behalf of all of the fourth grade team, the virtual and the in-person people, just thank you so much to our families. You have been beyond supportive and beyond flexible, and we're so incredibly thankful to you. We know how hard it is that you're covering. You've been kind of like our right-hand men and women at home, and um, we really appreciate you, and we are thankful for you and your children. Thank you, Aaron and fourth grade team. And uh, fifth grade, and I don't think, right, we don't have a representative from fifth grade. Mr. Parker, maybe you wanna take this for them? Sure, so as you can see on the slide, um, they are also asking for students to bring their laptops back and forth with their chargers and their headphones each day. Um, they'll keep their school supplies here at school. Uh, they are going to provide each student with a container to keep all their supplies in. And um, they also wanted you to know that they have two wonderful uh, teacher candidates uh, who are going to be leading learning starting on March the 23rd. So that is Mr. T and Ms. Hagen will be. Uh, taking over starting March 23rd. I was I was just gonna jump in. I know that I can say this on behalf of fourth and fifth grade with computers going back and forth, um, is to bring a charged laptop is, is like super, super helpful. Bringing a laptop that is charged when it gets here will be incredibly helpful. So, um, and I'm sure third grade would say the same on their first day that the laptop is showing up. If, um, if kids could get into the routine, of plugging in their laptops when they get home from school and then just grabbing it all to bring it back. I know that it's just one more thing to remember, but if we can try and get the kids to be um, just in the routine of making sure that they're bringing a charged laptop so that whatever the day brings, they're ready to go. Hey, Aaron. Uh, all right, we'll move on here. 
so next, so lunch, uh, again, we'll be eating in the, in the classroom uh, when it came down to the social distancing and space and use of tables, we weren't able to accommodate, not to mention we've had to create some new storage space, which has basically become about three quarters of our cafeteria. So we will eat in the classroom. Um, so it does say here to encourage eating outside whenever possible. The one challenging part for us, you'll see when we do our recess schedule, is that it, there's not a whole lot of outdoor space available, uh, particularly in the back, based on how our recess is going to work. So, um, uh, so that's not going to be a whole lot of options here for that. Uh, and then grab and go or lunches are available. Both breakfast and lunch are available to all students at no charge. In the morning, we're going to have uh, right now we have one uh, station for breakfast. We're going to add a second one next week, um, which will be more convenient for the uh, four, fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students. It'll be right outside the cafeteria. And so as they go to their classrooms, they'll be able to pick up breakfast. And uh, for our third grade students, it's right at the bottom of the stairwell there in the main lobby. And then lunches are being delivered to students, and we're continuing to refine that system. So it's a little bit smoother. But bottom line is they will be. Um, uh, getting their lunches delivered. I just had a phone conversation today with our cafeteria supervisor, uh, and we're going to work on a possible lunch, hot lunch option uh, for starting after spring break. And I just need to touch base with our teachers about thinking about logistics and um, getting down to the cafeteria and back and things like that. So we'll, if we can do that, we, we certainly want to do that for the students. Um, Recess. So the big thing at recess, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox here, but uh, we cannot use the playground equipment. That's what the uh, health department is telling us, and we need to follow that. So, um, uh, so the big thing is we cannot use the playground. Uh, and again, encouraging spacing as much as possible. Um, and you know, when we come back in, we'll certainly use hand sanitizer and, uh, and washing of hands as we get back to class. Uh, so you see here just a, a quick visual. Uh, so we have zones for our recess. We have nine recess zones. Uh, and so we're reusing our backfield. We're using the field across the bridge there, um, across Daniel's run. And then our three, uh, I almost said three laptop areas, three blacktop areas. And our PE teachers have done a great job of, of uh, providing recess carts and that cart right now has jump ropes and hula hoops and balls. And so uh, the teachers will let us know if that we need to add more things or different things. Uh, you know, last week, I think they cut some noodles so the kids could play some tag, but from a distance. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to refine again what recess looks like, but for the most part, the kids have done a good job out there. Um, we want to keep them busy. We want to get outside as much as possible. And hopefully next week's weather is as nice as this week's weather. Uh, but they'll stay in their zone. So when a class goes out, they will stay with that in that zone. So like if Ms. Millman's class has uh, field one here, they'll stay with Ms. Millman's class and play with those, um, you know, 13, 12, 10 to 14 students, depending on how many are in that day. Um, School supplies, I think you guys have uh, talked about that. We don't need to talk much more about that. Uh, you know, just that, uh, you know, the students aren't able to share supplies that they are in the past, and we will provide a refillable water bottle for all students. And next, uh, laptops, again, they covered this, and I think we, we hammered home the bringing a charge laptop. This is the same expectations if they were at an FCPS on school third through sixth grade students bring it back and forth. We are gonna provide cases. Most of third and fourth already have a case. You got it with the new laptop pickup um, and we'll provide it to anyone else who doesn't have it. And um, uh, just make sure they have it charged when they bring it in uh, each day. Uh, visitors still limiting visitors, uh, you, know, um, you know, making appointments if you need to come up or if it's an emergency, uh, you know, let us know and we'll certainly, um, you know, have to come in and meet with whoever it is that needs to be met with. Uh, again, same procedure, making sure you understand the health screening questionnaire, which is on our front door and wearing a face covering. 
and uh, becoming ill at school. And so uh, if the student does become ill, uh, our school health nurse will, you know, um, work, you know, try to figure out as much as possible if they're COVID symptoms or is it um, something else, right? Is it, you know, first thing in the morning, maybe they haven't eaten, maybe they were just out of recess and they just ate, ran around and they're not feeling good. Uh, so, but bottom line is if she determines that it's a, a symptom of COVID, uh, again, we'll use that care room. Uh, you will need to come pick up your child as soon as possible. And then there will be a form that needs to be completed. We'll give that to you uh, that needs to be completed by a doctor saying that, you know, the, the student does not have COVID. However, the doctor determines that through a, through a test or a consultation. So, um, and again, we'll give that to you. So that's not a form you have to worry about right now. Uh, you know, the response to the COVID case, we've had uh, two cases of COVID here, um, you know, since the original opening of school back in September. And, you know, you may have seen those communications, but like the entire community gets kind of a general communication and, uh, you know, students and the students and parents in that class would get a bit more details in terms of if you were a close contact, um, you know, we, the email says whether it was a student or staff member. So you have a little bit of an idea of, um, of you know, who it was, whether you were around a student or a staff member. Uh, so we'll work, you know, I work in um, really the health department leads this, you know, they'll tell me uh, which students or staff members need to quarantine and uh, we'll work with you individually. And then that'll determine whether or not we have to send, you know, one case doesn't necessarily mean the entire class has to, to quarantine, uh, depending on making sure we follow those mitigation mem uh, measures. And we certainly, the goal is, a, keep the students safe, and B, keep the students in school as much as possible. So it's it's not going to be the first thing we do to uh, to, to send the students to virtual. Uh, third through sixth grade comes up with some unique things. <laughs> that, uh, uh, and so I just want to go over, in terms of advanced math, um, we, we are, we're, we're going to be switching here. So, you know, the, the guidance has been to cohort as much as possible. Uh, we're allowing switching when it comes from an instructional perspective. So for special ed, for ESOL, uh, for advanced math, um, we are going to allow students to switch um, and, and go see their teachers uh, because we think that instructional piece is important. Um, so for advanced math, if they have an in-person advanced math teacher, which will be, um, I'm trying to remember, sixth grade and fifth grade, then they will physically move to that person's class. Third and fourth grade have virtual advanced math teachers. Those students will also move to a classroom where a classroom monitor will monitor them while they are connecting with their advanced math teacher online. So they will move. Uh, band and strings are occurring. Uh, it's another challenge with kids only here two days a week. What I would recommend if you're not sure whether or not your kid, if they're in band or strings and you're not sure if they're going to get it on the day they're here, is just to reach out to one of those two teachers um, and they'll be able to respond back to you. Specials are occurring in the classroom um, and, and they should have a in-person uh, teacher if it's an in-person class. The exception there is music in sixth grade, and this is a sixth grade meeting, so let me skip that. So bottom line is in-person. The downside right now is, again, uh, you know, specials are once a week. So if you're a kid who has PE on Tuesday and your in-person days are Thursday, Friday, you don't get PE in person. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, We'll, we'll look at after we all get settled if there's a way to do some sort of rotation where um, kids will get exposed to the in-person, um, you know, through a rotation. But um, if they're here in school, their specials teacher will be in person as well that particular day. And classroom monitors, again, being used in, um, in uh, 
in for some smaller groups, special ed and some of our special ed students in fourth grade will have a classroom monitor. And um, why am I drawing a blank on our other one in fifth grade? Those two um, are the ones that again, they, they may have, they may be going to a classroom monitor. Again, the teacher is gonna be teaching. It's just a matter of the who's overseeing it is, is you know, the classroom management part of it. So we've limited that. Um, use of classroom monitor here with only having three on board. Uh, that is, I think, it. And now we'll take questions. Why don't we start with um, Mr. Parker? Is there anything in the chat? Yeah. So I believe other than the one that just popped in, I was able to answer the other questions. So okay. the one that just popped in says, if a child is gonna be out sick on their in-person day, can the family come by to pick up the laptop if it was left at school? And certainly we can do that. Um, just it's always good to give the office a heads up and then we can make sure the laptop is in the office and they can bring it to the door when you arrive. Um, and then let's see, then was one more. Our son's laptop battery does not hold a charge. Um, not a problem before he was sitting in one's how do we get that fixed or replaced? So just um, if we reach out to Mr. Lee or um, you can reach out to me as well and I can connect you with Mr. Lee and um, we can get that taken care of for you. All right, so we'll open up if you wanna um, raise your hand, there's our hand raising tool. Um, we can take questions verbally as well. And Amy, I see your hand is raised. I'm muted. Hi. I just want to say thank you to the teachers and, and Mr. Smith and, and Michael for everything that you're doing for the kids and how much I acknowledge how much work you guys have to get the kids back to school safely. And um, if there's anything that you need from parents, I don't know if the PTA is. I'm coordinating that if there's any kind of list of supplies or snacks or things like that. But um, it would be great if, you know, if that was um, given to parents because we'd be happy to help out whenever possible. Thanks, Amy. Erin uh, kind of stole my closing statement, but she also said it much better than I usually do. So, I mean, you know, parent support has been awesome. You know, this is a new, another new challenge for all of us. Um, right now, thanks to the PTA, thanks to uh, I believe Office Depot, and I'm probably leaving somebody out. There's a, we still have a number of supplies in our Family Resource Center room. And if those do get exhausted, we'll certainly reach back out and um, you know, ask for help. And I think part of it too is getting into the building and figuring out exactly what, what we do need. <laughs> um, I think so far things have gone pretty well, but I know like just today, first grade was like, we need to get some Play-Doh. So, um, yeah, let us get back in the building again next week and we'll, we may have some more things. So thanks for your offer and kind words. Uh, Jeff, you've got a question. Hey guys. Um, so many of you, many of you know me. Um, first, I wanna call out uh, Miss Mil Milnin. And um, if you don't know, she stopped her corporate um, profession and went in teaching and she's awesome and she's helped out um, my middle child um, to a point where she's excelling. Ms. Weber um, and Ms. Yee um, know all of my children and you guys all rock and out of the 56 people, or 55 now, um, people in this meeting, um, you guys are, the rock and you're still there. And I hope that Daniel's run continues to succeed because you guys are staying there. Um, I appreciate everything that you've done um, and to help my children. And so um, I, you know, I hope that we all get back to this soon. Well, thank you, Jeff. Maybe tear up a little bit there. We look, we, I, I continue to say, uh, that we have 
an awesome staff. And I know like probably every principal says it, but like it's it's true, right? I mean, you know, this has been um, you know, all of our jobs, parenting, teaching, principaling is has all been difficult since last March 13th, but our staff has made principaling, and I don't think that's a word, but it is now. Um, you know, they've made it a lot easier on me, right? That they have done you you got the best staff uh, out of this whole group there. They've all stuck by by uh, Daniel's run, and and you can't yeah. you can get anything better than in these windows. It's the best. Yep. Yep, I agree. So thank you for the words. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. All right, other questions. Yes, I agree there, Lori. I can answer Mrs. Hughes's question. I just saw that pop up. Yeah, yes, we, um, we already have like little cubby bins that um, that Chris graciously purchased for each one of our in-person students. We are in the process of labeling them so that every kid has their own, they have their own spot for it to go in. Um, and there are supplies that are staying in school will stay there labeled each day. They'll bring their things to their desk and then they'll bring it back over to their cubby. And then um, when the next rotation of kids comes in, um, the same thing happens each day. So uh, third graders too, uh, fifth graders also have them. They order the same thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same or different in sixth grade um, with their routine, but yes, every student has their own cubby for their own supplies labeled with their name um, and organized by their days so that it's easy to move them in and out of their spots. Okay, so they don't have to bring that stuff home Thursday, Friday. Okay. Correct. They'll keep it right in their bin. So really the only thing that they should be bringing back and forth is their laptop and charger, their water bottle, their mask, and if you're bringing lunch and snack to school, um, they can bring that. But again, Lunch is free for all students if they choose to get it here. So laptop, mask, water bottle, snack, and lunch if you choose. Thank you. And Leslie, you have your hand up. Um, thanks, Chris. Um, I was wondering, I know that um, the Family Resource Center used to keep snacks for kids who couldn't or didn't bring snacks from home. Um, I'm one, and I know that there were times when they needed donations and then times when they were pretty flush with snacks. So are you interested in parents donating snacks and like, like bags, little individual snack size bags of goldfish or things like that, that are in the building for kids when they've forgotten to bring their snack? Yes, I do think that would be good. Let me, um, um, let me, I'll connect with you, Leslie, on how to do that. And I think you said the key word just when we do the donations, it does have to be things that are individually wrapped. Um, um, so yes, I'll, I'll loop back with you about that. Mr. Parker? No. Uh, lastly, anything else? I didn't mean to cut you off there. Good. Okay. And then Jeff, your hand. Uh, real quick. Um, my company, based on uh, Leslie's comment, um, uh, CJA Construction would like to donate five thousand dollars towards the cause. So if you can just, you know, figure out how to make whatever you need work, um, if somebody could take that money and, and make it work, then um, you can have it tomorrow. Well, uh, I don't know what to say. That's awesome. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Besides the kind of words donating money. So, yeah, yeah what I'll right. do is. Right. ask you towards what Leslie's talking about. So, like, yeah. you know. So let me coordinate with Leslie. That's like a million goldfish. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll coordinate with Leslie and then we'll loop you in with our my yeah. assistant who handles money. We'll, and then you we'll can just talk to Jennifer, my, my bookkeeper, and okay. make it all. Sounds awesome. Okay. Um, Thank as you. long as it goes to Dana's run, it has to go to yeah. the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. So, um, great. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, the teacher, all the teachers, are, uh, hop in if you feel like I, if I've left something out in the presentation here. Um, I know Miss Denton is probably tired of hearing it. This is number three for her. So, um, okay. We have about 
25 minutes until our Spanish session starts. So if you wanna hang out for questions, I'll stay here. If you're, if you're comfortable, you wanna head off the call, you're certainly free to do that. Hi, I actually have a quick question and I'm sorry, I'm on my phone and don't know how to use my raise hand feature. That's okay, you're good. <laughs> um, so everyone has said such wonderful things. I feel bad that I'm coming in with such a technical question. Um, okay. And I also agree, everyone has been wonderful. <laughs> um, but my question, I think it may have gotten missed in the chat, was the, due to the way we've had to do the schedule, obviously, to bring kids back hybrid, does that mean that there are going to be some kids who won't have in-person PE ever? Or are all classes getting PE twice a week so that each group is able to get one day? No, your initial statement is correct. That's what I was trying to explain, but I don't... I, as the words came out of my mouth, I felt like I was confusing myself. So the, the special schedule right now is set in that Tuesday through Friday time frame. So if your child is has PE on Tuesday, but they're home on Tuesday, right now they're always going to access PE at home through the computer. Um, they may then on Thursday and Friday, they might have Spanish and art, and they'll get Spanish and art in person because they're here in school. So once we get everybody back and we feel like our logistics are going pretty well, we will examine to see if we can somehow do a rotation. I'm not promising that that can happen, but it's certainly something we're going to look at to see if there's a way to switch that up at least for a few weeks. So not, you know, you're not always stuck with a, the same specials online or in person. Stuck's the wrong word, but we want to get them exposed to them. Does that help? Exactly. Yeah, it does. And I thought that was probably the case given the specials rotations, but I just wanted to double check. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And Mr. Smith, I know we were just emailing about this. Ms. Hughes is asking if kids will use the library at school um, or stick with the reservation process they're currently using. And I know we were just emailing about that a little earlier today. Yeah, Miss, I know right now the Right now, I believe it's just kindergarten that's physically coming into the library. Ms. Brosnan's working on that. The good news is the library is open. And again, you know, she's looking at her schedule and where she can accommodate that. So it's, we don't have a firm answer for you yet, but if we can get kids in the library, certainly that's our goal. And we certainly want them to have access to books. All right, other questions? All right, we're gonna thank you for your time. This is recorded tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll send out an email to you with this recording and the slideshow. I should have said at the beginning, sorry if you're a note taker and you scribbled everything down that I said I should have told you at the beginning you'll have access to all this um and uh we'll also send the Spanish version as well so uh, you can have a good night or keep asking us questions and our school staff if you're hanging around for the Spanish version, feel free to take a little break here. <laughs>